Well, good day, everyone, everywhere, and special greetings to all those seated in heavenly places in Jesus, our Messiah. Uh, the name of this broadcast is Cross the Border, and my name is Nicholas, and today is our uh, weekly live prophecy reality edition. Uh, seems uh, not many people are showing up for the broadcast these days. So if you're listening live, come on over to the chat room, or if you're working, keep listening and uh, enjoy the broadcast, <clears throat> if that's possible. Let's see. What do we have today? Well, things are really heating up in the political scene as America goes communist, socialist, or at least it seems to be going that way. But I have a prediction to make. Well, not really. Because <laughs> if I tell you what the Bible says, that I'm not really predicting anything. I'm telling you what God has written in advance, and uh, which is prophecy written in advance. Well, we don't see it clearly until it comes to pass. So I guess my question is, and I'm going to keep repeating this question, how do you know if your prophecy is correct? Well, you know your prophecy is the correct method of interpretation if it's coming to pass in history. That's the only way we know. If if none of your prophecy has come to pass in history, if none of what the interpretation method that you're using for prophecy has produced anything in history, then all you have is speculation. And I don't want to be there. Now, as to what the Bible says is going to happen in the future, I don't have to speculate. All I have to do is read it to you. And I know that if I read you out of God's Word, I know that it's correct because I have a faithful and true witness, and which is God's Word, which Christ said He was, proclaimed Himself to be in the very book of Revelation when He was speaking to John the Apostle who penned it about 95 A.D., and he said, uh, he talked about the things that are, and there were some things that were. There were the seven churches in Asia, which he needed to address. And so he wrote, a, he narrated a, an epistle for each one of them. And then he said the things which must shortly come to pass. And of course, as to their commencement. So these things would begin immediately following the giving of the revelation. And that's what you have in the book of Revelation. You have a, a prophecy, the things which must shortly come to pass. And as to their commencement, they started immediately and that has continued to unfold in time because prophecy is history in advance. And uh, so if your method of interpretation does not encompass the entire age since the revelation was given, then your method of interpretation is wrong. Now, there's uh, very few people uh, standing up and proclaiming the historicist method of interpretation. There are a lot of people going, well, they're, they're wrong. You know, the evangelical, futurist, dispensational, left behind a method of interpretation is obviously wrong. I mean, they violate the scripture itself by sit by saying things that aren't in there, um, putting in gaps and other things, uh, twisting the scripture to mean what it doesn't say, saying that prophecy that was given and fulfilled in history wasn't a true fulfillment because we have to wait for their speculative fulfillment of the same prophecy that has already been fulfilled since it was given in the past, they say, well, we have a speculation of it being fulfilled in the future, and you need to believe our future speculation because our future speculation is correct, and the past fulfillment is to be ignored. That's what they do. It's like you go to, for instance, Daniel 9, uh, chapter 9, the 70 weeks prophecy, where it says the prince of the people shall come and destroy the city. Well, that happened in 70 AD. But they say, no, 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 no. Ignore that. 
we're, we're not even going to allow that as a viable interpretation of uh, a viable fulfillment of the prophecy. Because, see, we have this future speculation, which we know is true. Therefore, what happened in the past that you call a viable fulfillment, well, that's not to be believed because we know that our future speculation is correct. Now, does that make any sense to anybody at all? Yeah, well, you can see it's uh, it's winning me a lot of friends <laughs> and supporters, right? You go to the chat room uh, right now, and there are two people in there besides myself, even though I've uh, sent this email out to uh, about 600 people this morning and notifying them and people who subscribe to my blog. They're not even showing up. So you wonder, how can I keep doing this? Well, only by the grace and the mercy of God in faith that uh, that this is what God has wants me to do because he hasn't given me anything else to do, so I'm going to keep doing it. So I might reach one or two people. Yay. Well, that's fine with me. I mean, who am I anyway? I mean, I'm nothing special or great that I should reach billions. And I certainly don't have any... Uh, big moneyed supporters uh, like some other people. Now there, on uh, First Amendment Radio, we play True News as a filler, and uh, sometimes it fills a half-hour spot, sometimes an hour spot. And usually they have pretty good stuff, but I, I think Rick Wiles is kind of going off the, the deep end because he's really trouncing and pounding on on Israel. And he recently, in one of his broadcasts, said that the Antichrist is Israel AI. That the Antichrist is not going to be the man of sin. I mean, how can the man of sin be an AI? It's going to be an AI man. That's artificial intelligence. And he puts Israel on top of the world with artificial intelligence. And he's saying that the AI is the beast and the beast is is an Israel AI that's going to rule the world. Well, he's not getting his interpretation from the Bible in any way. And he's certainly not reaching into the past. But he's defying, uh, he thinks that by defying what is already being overturned, because there's a lot of criticism out there of uh, dispensational futurism. So he's kind of on a bandwagon there about that and a lot of things he says are right but some things there's some things in there that just lead me to believe that uh, I don't know man it just like you know I, I hate to say it but they, they smack of a uh, shadow government coadjutor I mean I mean I don't want to believe that's true you know, I, I, I mean, you have, I, I think you have coadjutors. There, there are people that don't know that they're helping the Antichrist, but they are. And then there are, uh, th- those would be mostly temporal coadjutors because they're controlled by uh, fame, money, property, riches, lusts of the flesh. What, whatever it is, uh, or power, or, or you know, the temporal coadjutors are controlled by those things. And, and I think to a certain extent, so are uh, spiritual coadjutors. Now, spiritual coadjutors would be like the priesthood. And maybe even, you know, there are spiritual coadjutor plants. And and who 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 could we say is a plant, definitely. Well, I think someone like uh, Tony Palmer, I hate to speak ill of the dead, but Tony Palmer was definitely um, a temporal coadjutor. He was an Episcopal bishop or something, Bishop Tony Palmer. Remember him? He's dead. And now Rick Wiles had him on his broadcast about three years ago before he was killed in his uh, freak mo- uh, single vehicle motorcycle accident uh, uh, Rick Wiles uh, inter- interviewed him and didn't made no challenges to this uh, Tony Palmer at all now this was about the time about the same time that Bishop 
Tony Palmer, uh, introduced Kenneth Copeland and his ilk to Pope Francis. And Pope Francis made a video for Kenneth Copeland which is some people have spoofed and put in other words and stuff on, on YouTube. It's, it's really quite funny, but a lot of these people are passing this off because the Pope is speaking in Italian, and they're putting different words in there that are probably more complimentary to the Antichrist than anything else. And it, wouldn't, it would be funny if it wasn't so serious and people were ta- weren't taking it seriously. Because uh, the, the Pope, uh, Francis, uh, Jose Bergoglio, uh, he made a video for Kenneth Copeland and his crowd there uh, with ten, uh, Tony Palmer. Uh, so it was kind of funny, but we're getting off on something else now. Uh, okay, and uh, now Ke- uh, Kenneth, <laughs> Rick Wiles made, sent out a video, I think it was two days ago, and, and I want to show you, he made this list. And I, really, I need to I, I need to chastise uh, Rick Wiles a little bit because he's made up this derogatory term for dispensational futurists. He calls them dipsies. Now, if someone called you or me a dipsy, I, you know, I would think, I would feel like I was being derided. So, uh, I don't know if if, it, if he's doing it on purpose, then he's doing it to alienate these people and excite other people. Um, and see, now that's something that a Jesuit coadjutor would do. And I mean, I hope that Rick Wiles is not a, is not a knowing Jesuit coadjutor. But a lot of things that he's doing are really, you know, are like red flags. And so here I'm going to put this um, video uh, that you can find this on his True News uh, YouTube channel. And this is from uh, End Time Delusion. So... And uh, on his True News channel there, and you know, let's see if I can scoot that up so you can see it there, the date and everything on it, right there. It is stream live on March 11th, so that was last week, or no, that was two days ago. So yeah, that's what I said. And in this, he has this list, and he says these are the Dipsy. This is his Dipsy list, okay? And if you believe. All these things, you're a dipsyite or something like that. R- really complimentary. And you know, I I wrote a book, and it's called When the Third Temple Is Built, the Rapture Play Will Begin. Now, I bought, I wrote this book uh, for dispensational futurists. It's a little 100-page booklet to uh, explain to them. Um, how other people might see uh, their method of interpretation, but how it lines up or matches up or really contrasts with uh, Protestant historicism. Okay? And that's what I do with this book. And I give them, uh, you know, just kind of to wake them up, but I don't insult them by making up uh, silly names to call them. Uh, I try. I, I respect a lot of these people. I respect because I was deceived like they were once, and I certainly wouldn't have would not have responded to someone calling me a derogatory name. But so anyway, that's one thing, and he should stop that right away if he's really trying to reach these people, because he's only going to alienate them. And because once you alienate someone, then they can't hear what you're saying. You know. Unless you convict them of sin, then the Holy Spirit can take care of them. But uh, by call, calling someone a derogatory name is not going to uh, endear you or your message to them. But and he's got this list. Now, most of this list is, is right, and I would agree with it. If you believe a, a, you're a dispensational futurist, I'm not going to call you a derogatory name. I'm going to call you what you are. You're a dispensational futurist. You believe in... A speculation of the future as the truth, okay, rather than historical evidence, okay. And so his list starts out: You believe that Jesus will establish a? Is that the right one? Yeah, I guess no. That's not the beginning of the list. Here we got the. I guess that's yeah. That's the beginning. You of believe the, people will marry? Okay, I'm not going to play him. Um, 
Yeah, let me see if I if that's the beginning of the list here. Okay, uh, it's not the beginning of it. Let me back up a little bit. Well, there's a lot of things on this list. Okay, so you're a dipsy. That he gets a dipsyism. So you're a dipsy if you believe in a secret rapture of Christians prior to the second coming of Christ. Okay, so you're dispensational futurist. I'm going to say it correctly. You're dispensational, and these people know they are because this is what they believe. Um, you believe non-Christians will be left behind. Okay, well, I believe in the resurrection. Non-Christians will be left behind. I don't believe in a secret rapture. I don't believe in the rapture at all. You all know that. That's why I wrote my book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Um, you believe there will be chaos on earth after the Christians are taken away in a secret rapture. I, cars, and, you know, just watch the rapture movies, and he's telling you, you would believe what you saw in the rapture movies. Uh, oh, didn't want to do that. Okay. Uh, you believe there will be a powerful ruler on earth for seven years called the Antichrist. Well, I believe the Antichrist is here, has been here uh, since about, well, since his, let's see, that would be around, if his 12, if his 1260 year reign ended about 1875, I mean about 1775, French Revolution, if it ended about there, then it would have been about five or 600 A.D., when the Antichrist began to reign. So that would have been, you know, how many years ago? 1,500 years ago when the Antichrist began to reign. And he reigned for 1,260 years. That's what I believe. But I don't believe there's going to be a powerful rule that's, ruler that's going to rise up. So, But dispensationalists believe this. He says, you believe the Antichrist will take over the world after the rapture. Well, we don't believe in a rapture. You believe the Antichrist will establish a one-world government. The Antichrist has already established one-world government. He reigned for 1,260 years, and right now he has established another one-world government. Okay. We know that's true uh, because everyone is marveling when they see the beast that was and is not yet is. They don't understand what they're seeing. Okay, you believe that there will be a time called the Great Tribulation. Well, no, this isn't. This is not found in the Bible. It says there will be Great Tribulation, but it doesn't say call it the. There's no definite article before Great Tribulation in the Bible. But so, but they believe there is because these these people who have the these coadjutors, these these uh, shadow government coadjutors for the Antichrist have taught them a lie that the Bible says the great tribulation when there is no definite article that this great tribulation will last seven years also not in the Bible. Uh, you believe that God's prophetic clock stopped in the 69th week of prophecy and that's true. They believe that but that didn't happen. We teach here as all historicists teach and believe that the 70th week did follow the 69th. Let's go to our next page here. You believe that, and this goes right along with it, the parentheses, the time out, that the Christian church is a parentheses or a time out. Um, that's because the prophetic clock stopped. And I mean, Chuck Missler was a big teacher on this. He was like one of the main guys who came up with this uh, prophetic time clock that stopped and they had a time out. And the way he he depicts it is you're playing chess and you hit the you know, the timer and the timer stops on the prophetic clock. And of course we know that didn't happen. And uh, they also believe that 1948 was when the clock started. So you believe the prophetic clock was started in 1948. This is what futurist future dispensational futurists believe. You believe that a raptured Gentile Christians will wait in heaven for seven years. And they all have all kinds of speculations as to what the church is going to be doing in heaven for seven years while they're waiting <laughs> for Jesus to return and all the chaos on earth is going on. Uh, I, I don't know why they, you know, uh, the the great tribulation on, oh yeah, that's because the Jews get to play for seven years or something. Uh, you believe that the Jews are God's chosen people. 
That's what they believe. That future dispensational futurists, Zionists believe that the Jews are God's chosen people. It says you believe that the Christians are God's heavenly people. Well, you know, I've never heard that one before. That's a new one on me. I've read a lot of books, but I never noticed anybody saying, as opposed to God, the Jews being God's chosen people, that Christians are God's heavenly people. Okay, I believe that we are part of a holy nation, that we are the true Israel of God, the same Israel of God that that existed from Adam and Eve. You know, God's chosen people, the elect. I could say the elect would be better because Adam and Eve were elect. Let's see, who else was elect? Um, we we could say, um, um, let's see, uh, Methuselah was elect, Job was elect, um, Noah was um, was part of the elect. All of those pre-Israel people were elect. They weren't Jews, were they? As Jews would have to be of those uh, of the tribes of Israel, wouldn't they? Yeah. So, so what about all the people that were before that? So you now the dispensationalists. I don't know what they believe. If all those people like Adam and Eve are going to be there in the resurrection, I do. I believe all the elect from the beginning of time will all be resurrected, and all of the elect of the church will be resurrected because not everybody who belongs to the visible church on earth is part of the elect, especially, you know, the majority of those who belong to that great apostate church, the very minority in there that are elect. And I get that from the Bible itself because otherwise God wouldn't say, come out of her, my people, because his people are the elect. And uh, so he's not calling Jews when he says, my people. But anyway, chosen people are the elect. That's what I would say. Uh, you believe that the Jews are exempt from God's commandment to repent of their sins. Well, of course, that's that's stupid. I've never, uh, I guess maybe people believe that. I don't know, because uh, I know that Jesus was in Israel during the 70th week, uh, calling the Jews to repent. And he even proclaimed it, I've not come to, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he certainly wasn't speaking to anyone but Jews when he was calling people to repent. Because he went about preaching and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So anybody who believes that Jews are exempt from God's command to repent of their sins, uh, to believe on Jesus Christ and be baptized, uh, is delusional to the nth degree, man. Because you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I would know any dispensational would say that. But he's got it on his list here. So we'll say, yeah, that's a bad thing. Yeah. If you believe that Christians must bless Jews and the state of Israel no matter what they do or say, well, that's ridiculous on its face because you have you have murdering, lying, cheating uh, uh, Jews just as well as any other race. So I don't like to single out the Jews. They're just as bad as other people, proportionally, probably, as any other people on the earth. Okay, well, you're listening to Cross the Border, our Prophecy Reality Edition. We'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on satellite, internet, or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, 
we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. back. You're listening across the border. Uh, we were going through this uh, news uh, that Rick Wiles put on his uh, show a couple days ago, and uh, he's uh, lashing out at dispensational futurists and uh, ac- actually even calling them a derogatory term that he made up. He's calling them dipsies, and uh, he's, you're a dipsyist if you believe these things, he says. Well, I do believe some of the things on this list only because I read them in the Bible. So it's it's kind of dangerous that he has this list. So, I mean, because I can write down a hundred things that are wrong, and then if I throw three things that are right in there and say, if you believe any of these, you know, uh, or most of these, then you're a dipsy. Well, I don't believe most of them, but I do believe some of them because I read them and I'm going to show them it to you in the Bible itself so you can believe it or not. Okay? And so the list continues and... Let me let me actually get the list on the screen this time for people watching, but you can uh, check it out later if you're just listening. You believe that people who criticize the state of Israel are cursed by God. Well, I believe uh, you can criticize anyone where criticism is due. If someone murders, you, you should criticize that. If someone does evil, you should criticize that because we are here to protest evil. I mean, that's part of uh, what being a Protestant is about that we call out evil. Uh, and uh, we have plenty of example in the scripture. You believe that the United States of America suffered calamities and disastrous events because president government officials made decisions that were not in the best interest of the state of Israel. And so this goes on to the Zionist agenda here, which I am not a Zionist. I'm not about the Zionist agenda. Uh, I think that Israel should be treated like any other nation on earth because it isn't a special set-apart, called-out nation of God anymore, because the time determined for Israel ended with the 70 weeks. Now, of course, the dispensational futurists have now extended the 70 weeks because of their parentheses. Oops, no Israel. Now we've got Israel's back, and has been back. I mean, it's been a long week. Cause it's been going on since 1948. All of the other weeks were actually seven years. This one's been going on for quite a while now. So I, I don't know. It's a, that's But they believe that Yeah, it's kind of bizarre that the prophetic clock started again in 1948, but really is going to start when the secret rapture happens seven years before the resurrection and Jesus returns which none of that you can find in the scripture. So I'm on board with all of that. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, You believe greater Israel, men and Jews are entitled to own and occupy all the land that constituted ancient Israel and whatever, Palestine and all this. Okay, that's all the Zionist agenda. You believe a third temple must be built in Jerusalem before Jesus returns. Well, I don't believe that. Are they going to build a temple? They might. They might not. Um, We will see. But I wrote my, my book, When the Third Temple is Built, because 
if they have their way, I believe they're going to start building something like a third temple. I, I believe it's going to be a national synagogue, not really, because they're not going to do animal sacrifice. So it's not really going to be a temple if they don't do animal sacrifice. That's part of the script. You can, you can read about that in my book, When the Third Temple is Built. As, actually, you can read it for free to go to the Get the Book tab there. Or I read, I narrate the whole book on YouTube. Uh, you can find the list there. Go to my channel on YouTube or on my uh, website and just put in When the Third Temple is Built and you'll find the list. And I'll narrate the book to you. You can read it yourself, whatever. Uh, but it's really, you can get it really cheap. If you wanted to buy this in bulk, it's a little pocket book. I made a little pocket book edition because they're about $3 a copy. If you buy them in bulk, I can get them shipped right to you from the printer at that price. I won't make a penny on it. How about that? Um, and I've already given thousands of copies away, uh, and a lot of them, most of them to dispensational futurists. Yeah. Um, no, most of them threw them in the trash probably before they even gave it a chance. But hey, you know, are, are they? Because a lot of them have showed up at used bookstores. <laughs> so, so, so maybe God's just getting them to the people that need them or that will respond to them one way or another. That's my prayer anyway, that they uh, won't go out there anyway. Uh, you believe the wicked and unsaved will not be judged till the end of a thousand year millennial kingdom on earth. Now that you can find directly in Revelation chapter 20 and I'm going to show it to you. So he has stuff that the Bible actually says in his list of things that make you a dipsy. So unfortunately I'm a dipsy or a partial dipsy or something and I don't appreciate being called a name that he made up, some derogatory name that he made up simply because he has some things that are written in the Bible that I believe in his list. And that's the first one in his list. You identify as a Christian Zionist. Well, I do not. I'm not a Christian Zionist. Okay, let's let's move down in his list here and see what else we got. Okay, and I think this is the end of the list. You believe that Jesus will establish the kingdom in Jerusalem when he returns to earth? I do believe that. Well, I don't believe it'll be a Jewish kingdom as we know what, as we call a Jewish kingdom today, uh, in a derogatory sense. I believe that when Jesus returns, he will establish Jerusalem as his capital over the whole earth. Now, if you go back to Daniel chapter 2 and read the end of the, uh, of the interpretation that God gave of the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, where the stone cut out without hands represents Jesus and his kingdom. It strikes the mystery Babylon image in the feet and abolishes all of the kingdoms of this world or the times of the Gentiles, which also that mystery Babylon uh, statue represents the times of the Gentiles. Also in the same video somewhere, uh, Richard uh, uses the phrase times of the Gentiles derogatorily. Okay, as if it's something that Darby made up, when that is a phrase that Jesus coined himself. Okay, and you can get that from the Gospels because he says that Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. And the times of the Gentiles will, of course, be fulfilled when Jesus comes or is depicted in Daniel chapter 2 when the stone that was cut out without hands strikes the image in the feet and then becomes a great mountain and fills the whole earth, that's when Jerusalem will be Jesus, King Jesus, or Yahushua's capital over the whole earth, and we will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Now that's explicitly stated in the scripture. You cannot get around that. Okay, But to put in a derogatory term here, where it says, if you believe this, that there's something wrong with it, because it will be the uh, establish a kingdom over the whole earth. Will it be Jewish because he's Jewish? Yeah, well, anyway, but if you believe that, so I, I, I believe it, but not in the way he's saying it, okay? You believe the Jewish kingdom will exist. I believe that Jesus' kingdom will exist physically reigning on the earth for a thousand years. I believe that after the Lord returns. That's right. I believe that his kingdom. Now it won't be a Jewish kingdom as 
like Israel over there today. But that's what he's trying to that's what he's trying to get try to say. You believe there will be unsaved people alive after Jesus returns and sets up a thousand year millennial kingdom. Now, you're not a dispensational futurist if you believe that, because there's a lot of indications in the scripture that that will be the case for that thousand years. You will people people will marry and have children during the thousand year millennial reign. Well, a thousand year millennial is redundant because a millennial reign is a thousand years. Um, so I do believe that. There are indications that this will happen during the millennial reign of Christ. Do you believe unsaved people who survive the great tribulation and live will have the opportunity to be saved? Yes, I do. Okay? And I'm not a dispensational futurist because there are indications in the scripture that this will be the case. And I've outlined all of these before. I did a series, and it's called, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, get you, we'll point you to that. It's on my uh, website on the front page. Let me show you that right now so you can see it. It's right here, alien invasion. When Christ returns, the, the world is going to treat it as an alien invasion. And that's why they're going to mount up and, and as if they're going to do battle with God. But, of course, their battle isn't going to work. So when Christ comes and sets up his government for a thousand years, and this is a five-part series here where we talk about what's going to happen when Christ uh, invades the earth and conquers it and sets up his kingdom with Jerusalem as a capital for a thousand years. And we talk about all these things and some of these things that, that Rick Wiles has in his list as uh, something derogatory you shouldn't believe. Okay. Um, you believe unsaved people, I already read that one, you believe Satan will be released from the bottomless pit near the end of the thousand years, and it explicitly says that. Here, I can show you that in, in the Revelation right now. Okay, If we go to chapter 20 here, what does it say? He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is a devil, and Satan bound him a thousand years. Revelation 22, uh, that's 20, verse 2. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. So see, the Bible explicitly states what he has in your list and you are derogatorily called a dipsy if you believe it. Okay? Now, I know that there are people that believe this is all to be taken as uh, not literally, but as figurative. Okay? I'm not going to call them names because I believe that. I'm going to respect them because they are truly Reformed Christians. They just have a different view on prophecy. And I understand that. And I'm not going to put them in the dispensational dipsy camp. And I'm certainly not going to take something that the Bible explicitly says and do what Rick Wiles has done and put it in a list of uh, under people who believe it under some derogatory name. Okay? And I hope Rick Wiles sees this video because he needs to pay attention and he needs to do a little more study and a little more Bible reading before he does this. You believe, okay, where else? Uh, okay, you believe Satan will be released. So I just read you that, that that's actually the explicitly stated in the scripture that it's going to happen. So if you believe something that's explicitly stated in the scripture because you don't agree that he believes, his belief that it's uh, figurative, well, he doesn't even address it actually. He just says it as if it isn't in the Bible at all. That there's no debate whatsoever. You believe the new heaven and new earth would not appear till the end of a thousand year millennial kingdom. Again, let's go back to the Bible. So you're a dipsy if you believe this. You have this derogatory name pinned on you by Rick Wiles if you believe this. But if you open up your Bible, which I'm going to do right now, and you go to Revelation chapter 21, and it says, And I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and earth were passed away. See, the 7,000 years are done. Okay, The 7,000 year days of this creation are done, and then there's a new heaven and a new earth. Okay, 
That happens after when they're passed away. All of the things in verse 20 take place on the earth, whether you believe they're figurative or literal. Even the figuratives believe that those things happen on earth, but they happen figuratively. So the new heaven and new earth hasn't appeared yet. As God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death. So this happens after death. And at the end of the Revelation, what do you have? I mean, in Revelation 20, when Satan is loosed out of his prison and the judgment seat is set, and there is the second death. It's called the second death because all those people are going to be resurrected to be judged and to be judged for the, that's the final judgment. Now, we're already judged in Christ. The elect are already judged in Christ. That's why they don't need to go to a judgment day because we're already judged, re, uh, been condemned to death, and resurrected in Christ. See, that's the place of the elect. So there's no need for a judgment day for us because we're already judged in Christ and vindicated in Christ. So we get to be resurrected and rule and reign with him for a thousand years. But when there is no more death, then that's when the new heaven and new earth happen. And you, you can find that in Revelation 20 uh, verse 1, which is really the same the continued narrative from the end of verse of uh, chapter 20. It's not like it's a different narrative. It starts out with the word and. <laughs> so get a clue. It's a continued narrative from the end. And whosoever was not found or written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's the second death. See, this is the second death. Whoever was found not found in the book of life was cast into the fire. And then you go to chapter 21, and I saw a new heaven and new earth. It's a continued narrative. So, wrong again, Rick. I'm sorry, this should not be in a list of people that you're going to... Something that is stated explicitly in the scripture should be not on a list uh, where you derogatorily uh, name people uh, some, as as something that they shouldn't be believing or heretics or whatever you're calling them. Okay? You believe Judgment Day is okay. So we went through his entire list and you can find that there. I have this transcript. You know, and there's a couple other things that really bother me. Because he says, he starts out his video, if we go to the beginning here, and, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, this is something that bothers me. If I If I look for if I start up here, I have the transcript. You can open a transcript on YouTube. And I look for the word sign. And he says, he starts out this video. It was really bizarre. Before the program started, he has this thing running in the background. And uh, he says, start, get through to my generation. Start signing the cross. You know, you know the sign of the cross? Where you do that thing, you sign the cross. Going, why is he telling people to sign the cross? See, this is something that a Jesuit coadjutor would do, a spiritual coadjutor, not temporal. And, and Rick, he seems to, I think he has his own church, doesn't he? He preaches every Sunday or something. So maybe he is a spiritual coadjutor. I mean, I just really try to give people the benefit of the doubt. The scripture says we should believe the best. And I've been believing the best so far because I've been actually airing this guy on First Amendment radio because I thought his news program was great and he has a lot of good stuff but uh, these things these things are starting to add up and bother me like when he had Tony Palmer on and didn't have one challenging thing to say to the guy the whole time he was on and and he even said in his, he even put down Protestant belief historicism and he called a he he espoused on that very broadcast. He used the phrase, uh, I think it was millenarian heresy. Yeah, millenarian heresy. He he decried the millenarian heresy. So if you believe in the millennium, you're a heretic. If you believe, see, because he's a Catholic. I mean, definitely. Well, he was an Anglican bishop, but he's definitely you know, a co, uh, spiritual coadjutor for the Antichrist since he's good buddies with him, you know. 
he introduced uh, Tony. I mean, Tony Palmer introduced uh, Pope Bergoglio too. I mean, they're buddies, man. Okay, something going on there. But anyway, he starts with this program and he talks about making the sign every day. He says, start signing the cross on your forehead every day and declare what God did for you in the cross. And uh, every day, making the sign across in your, uh, on, uh, of the cross on your forehead. Okay? And so he's got this thing where he... Uh, and he says it three times at the beginning of the program when you see this Please Stand By screen. He says, if your family is being attacked by de demons, make the sign of the cross daily. Has your business and your career been attacked by Satan? So it's kind of, that's very Catholic to me. To, you know, make the sign of the cross. That's a sign of a Catholic. Okay, so, uh, and, okay. And another thing is he, he uses phrase, and, and so I'm going to put this one in here. I got this search going here. Um, a new reformation. Okay, so, oh, okay, I spelled it wrong. It doesn't find it unless I spell it. There it is. Okay, he says now that have become as corrupt as what the Catholic Church was 500 years ago. Well, the Catholic Church was corrupt way before 500 years ago. It started out corrupt from its beginning about 600 A.D. So, you know, you have to go 1,500 years ago, not 500. 500 years was the beginning of the Reformation. But he started using this phrase now, New Reformation. Now, who wants a New Reformation? Not the Jesuits. Well, they want a new one because they don't like the old one. They've been battling it for 500 years. So, he says the Reformation has now become dead, stale, corrupt, irrelevant. Those are words of a Jesuit coadjutor because the, the Jesuit, the shadow government for the Antichrist, they are his counter-Reformation army. They've been battling the Reformation ever since it it reared up 500, uh, 700 years ago, beginning with Wycliffe. You're going back, you know, uh, six, seven hundred years ago with the with the grandfathers of the Reformation, so to speak. Okay, that's the true Reformation. And we want people. We want the Reformation to rise back up. We don't want a new one because there are new Reformations out there, and believe me. They're Jesuit Reformations. You have the New Apostolic Reformation. Big movement out there with a lot of people. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely Roman Catholic. No doubt about it. It's what's behind it because they all love the Pope. I've met these people. They're, they're all around me. They love Pope Francis. Uh, they practically worship him, call him Holy Father and stuff like that. That's that's your new Reformation, okay? So, so these are things, these are indicators that I would be very afraid of, and you know I have a feeling that uh, Rick Wiles is not going to answer any of these uh, challenges I have for him. Uh, I've sent him copies of my book. He's never even acknowledged that he received a copy uh, of my book or said anything about it. He's had very. He's even admitted that some of the a lot of the people in this very broadcast, some of the people that he's deriding and calling dipsies today, he's had on his broadcast in the past. <laughs> but see, this is. This is what a Jesuit coadjutor does, so it, it's, I'm kind of worried. I mean, I hope he isn't, and I, I would like to see him vindicate himself by embracing uh, Protestant, true Protestant historicism and naming the Antichrist, the biblical and historical Antichrist that was outed by the Reformation uh, and the pre-Reformation fathers uh, seven, eight hundred years ago with the Albigenses, the uh, Waldenses, and, and Wycliffe uh, and Hussites, and as it goes on, they all outed the the papacy as the as the man of sin, the seed of the man of sin, and the Roman Catholic Church as 
the great apostasy. And to this very day, to this very day, a greater apostasy has not risen up. How anyone could deny that the Roman Catholic, which is an oxymoron, because if it's Roman, it can't be Catholic, meaning universal, unless it's universal in its locality, which is Rome. <laughs> but it's not. It's over the whole earth. So you have an oxymoron, another indication that it is that great apostasy, two billion strong today. Yeah, that's pretty great. That's, uh, that's pretty big. And it can't be an apostasy because the Buddhists aren't an apostasy. They're not Christian. You can only have an apostasy from the true faith. So nothing else counts. It is the biggest one, and it and and I don't believe a bigger one's going to rise up. And certainly for the dispensational futurists, there's going to be no greater apostasy that's going to suddenly rise up in some fictional seven-year period in the future and, and be be bigger than a two billion adhere an apostasy that already exists. Okay. Well, I don't know what we're going to do in the next hour. We have we can take calls, talk about whatever you want to talk about. Come on over to the chat room before I run out of something to say or I'll just have to think of something else. But stick around. I'm sure it'll be good. Don't go anywhere. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crossthborder.org.